Okay, as you can see, I've been working a little bit in this file, but the important thing that I want to talk about now is just get into some of the scripts that I was showing you of this screen going up and down. Let's start with that one. I've been working on some others too that we'll talk about, but let's go right into the screen up and down. Here's the button for it. I just created a sphere, turned it into a blueprint by hitting this button here. It would say add blueprint if it wasn't a blueprint yet. Now I can edit the blueprint because the blueprint is there. You have to make sure this screen is also turned into a blueprint. Movie screen underscore BP and screen button underscore BP. We'll be doing all the controlling from this button. This has the main script on it, but it needs to reference this blueprint over here. That's why this needs to be made into a blueprint and I'll show you why. It has to do with variables. Let's go into edit the blueprint of the button. Okay, let's delete this. I'll create it for us so I can show you. There are three main variables in here. One is screen down, which is a Boolean, yes or no, true or false. There's another Boolean, can press screen button, another true or false. And then there is this variable, which is actually set to, as you can see, the variable name is screen and the variable type is movie screen BP. So it's actually set to be equal to the blueprint class of movie screen BP, which there's only one member of that class and it's right there. That is the movie screen BP blueprint class. Okay, so this is actually equal, or that variable is actually equal to that specific object, that movie screen that we wanna move up and down. So you can see I use that variable in here, right here, screen. And when I start moving it up and down, I just use this variable to reference it. And I'll show you all that. If you want to create a new variable, what you do is just go to here, hit variable, and then you have the option to name it. That's where I can name it test. And you can see this is a Boolean. Okay, and there's not much else you can do with it except set the type here, right? But once you compile, it will give you the option, I guess on the Boolean you can do it before you compile, but others you have to compile first. Test default value. Okay, right now it's unchecked, which means false. If you check it, the default value becomes true. Or on and off, or yes or no, however you want to think about it. Okay, great. So that's how those booleans were created. And you'll see how we use them in the course as we go along, or in this script. Okay, I've put my different script parts into a nice little comment bubble here. And you can do that by, I did this as an example already. You can select several different parts, several different nodes, and then right click on it and create comment from selection. Okay, and then that just that just kind of organizes it and you can move them all together. So in order to show you visually what I'm doing here, I put them into different com comment bubbles. So you guys know about the event pickup event. We're just using that to trigger everything. And as soon as you trigger it, as soon as you go and pick up that button, you click on it with your VR hands, right? It goes to a branch and a branch is a conditional statement. If condition is true, execution goes to true, otherwise it goes to false, okay? So the branch is just checking something. What is checking is my can press screen button, which is a Boolean. And the default value of it is yes, true. Okay, so it's checking that. And right here it says can press screen button Boolean current value equals true. Okay, so because it's true, it will now run this. If it was false, it would do absolutely nothing. I could put some more scripting here if I wanted, but I want it to do nothing. So if if the screen button can be press, pressed, it will now go to this one, which checks another condition and it is the screen down. Okay, so if it, can, if it is pressable and if the screen is down, now we've gotten to here, true. Okay, and if, if the screen is down and is pressable, if all that's true, we will end up here in the put screen up sequence of events, okay? So let's talk about what happens in here. We have a sequence, and these are all accessible by just doing this. Type in sequence, right? It gives you a little sequence node. We're just right-clicking, and the 
what was the other ones we were using? These branches, right? Branch. Okay. So these are all things that you'd be familiar with if you are a computer programmer or if you've done any computer programming. If not, then uh, this might be new to you. But this is how coding works. You use branch, you, really they're if, um, true false statements. It's a conditional statement. And then a sequence is a sequence of events that will happen in sequence. <laughs> and, uh, and in this sequence, we're putting the screen up. So what we're doing is this sequence up on top, the first sequence that runs, is just taking that button. And if you notice when I click on it, when I grab it, it shrinks real quick and then goes and then goes back to normal size. And that's just to give you feedback like, yes, you did press the button. So the way that we're doing that is we just set actor relative scale 3D. And when it's talking about the actor, it's going to the root component of whatever blueprint we're in. And of course, that is the button blueprint. So when it's talking about actor, it's talking about that static mesh in that button blueprint right there, this component. OK. So it's scaling it down to half in all axes. Then it's delaying for 0.2 seconds, and then it's scaling it back to one. And the last thing that it does, and remember these little in arrows and out arrows are how you control your flow. So after the scale happens, you now do the next thing. The executable goes to this, which sets the variable of can press screen button to unchecked or false. Okay, now when you drag these variables in, you can do a set or a get. So a get just references it, and you can take that and drag it into somewhere else, right? Like that. But the set button gives you a node like this, and you turn it on or off, OK? So after that thing scales down and then back up real quick, when you press it, we now make it so that that button can't be pressed again by unchecking the variable can press green button. Okay, and the reason we do that is because we don't want you just pressing it over and over and over again and running these scripts over and over again. Once that's turned off, now if you grab that button again, it's going to check it right here and it's going to be false because we just set it to false and now nothing will happen when you press that button. Okay, so that makes it so you can't just keep pressing it and confusing the the screen so it doesn't know what to do and it keeps starting over and over and over and over. Okay. Now it's set that the button cannot be pressed currently. Okay, so it does all that sequence and then it comes down and goes to this sequence which goes into a timeline. Okay, you create a timeline by right clicking, going to timeline. Add timeline at the bottom, okay? So when you go into a timeline, It'll look like this. You'll want a float track for what we're doing. Okay, and all this is is values over time. These buttons here zoom to fit everything in horizontally. These fit everything vertically. Okay, this is the length of time, five. You have some other options here like autoplay and loop. Let's go look into, well, actually first, add a key. Let's do this. Okay, there's one key. And you can see there's my line now, right? So the key is, let's say it's at time zero and value zero. Okay, time zero, value zero. And then we want another key that's at five. So the full extent of our length of time here and the value is five. Okay, now we can do the zoom things. Okay, so over time, as these these represents frames basically so as your frames are going along it's getting the values getting higher and higher and higher so how do we use that value let's delete this one and use the one i've already made if we go in here it's actually set to zero zero and it's set to time five value two okay so what that's doing is we're taking this new track and we're taking those, the new track is the numbers that are being generated with each frame, which are changing with each frame too, as we saw in the graph. And then we're plugging it into this add relative location. Okay, so I'll explain what's all going on in here. But the simple part of it is we're taking the screen variable, we're bringing it in here, we're saying get. 
Okay, and all that's doing is getting a reference to our screen, which I showed you, that blueprint screen, which has our movie screen in it. Okay, so that variable is basically set to our movie screen. That's the value of it. So we're dragging it in, and we're taking it, making it the target of this add relative location. The add relative location is just the node that's moving our screen. Okay, so this timeline is, the executable is update, and it's going to update the location of our screen. Now, how is it going to update that? Well, that's where we use these numbers that are being generated. You can see they're eventually being plugged into the delta location. So the change that's happening on our screen is being driven by that graph that we drew in our timeline. Now, obviously, there's some other things going on in here. You can see that here. Now, what is all this stuff? Well, I was running this directly into the make vector. Okay, make vector is just... Remember, a vector is three values, okay? So X, Y, and Z in this case. We just want to use the Z for the delta location. So we want X and Y to stay the same, and it's just going up in the Z. So what you do is you make a vector and set X and Y to zero, and then you take this number and plug it into the Z. So this timeline is only controlling the Z axis of this vector, and then we take that vector and plug it into there. So now we have control, even though we only have a single value being spit out of this timeline, we're telling it the other two values should be this, because this takes a vector, right? It can't just take a single value for the location. The location is based on three different axes. So we're setting x and y to zero, z to whatever this timeline is spitting out. Now, what is all this junk going on in here? This was one of the more fun parts to figure out for this. And I hate to have to tell you this, but you will need to do some math sometimes when you're scripting. I had to do some math here, and that's what you're seeing. The reason that I had to do math is because this is actually based on, this updates by frame, not by actual time. So it's not by seconds, it's by frames. And depending on what your frame rate is in your computer, which is all based on your video card and all that kind of thing, whatever frame rate you're getting in VR, that's how fast your screen's gonna go up, or that's how much your screen's gonna go up, okay? So if the value was one for every frame that that thing's gonna go up, but your frames are going super fast, then you're gonna be going up 90, you know, like say you have a frame rate of 100, you're gonna be going up 100 units every second. And so over five seconds, it's gonna go up 500 units, which might be too much. You want you want it to be a fixed amount of units that it goes up, if that makes sense. So it can't be dependent on how fast your frame rate is, but it is. That's what this math is going to come in and do. It's going to fix that to make it so it always goes up a fixed amount, regardless of what your frame rate is. So what it'll do is it'll skip. It'll, it'll look like it's a little choppy if you have a really slow frame rate but the distance will still go up the same, same amount in the end, the same overall amount, if that makes sense. I'm going to open up a little PDF I made that can hopefully help make this a little more clear. Okay, here's a little PDF that I made. Math, boo! For scripting things, you need to use a lot of logic, like if this, then that, okay? So if you remember like your geometry proofs and stuff like that, logic-based if-then statements, all that stuff applies very closely to scripting and programming. So yes, sometimes you've got to do some math. Sorry. But this math is pretty simple. What I'm doing is taking the target frames per second, which I want it to be 40. And, and that's basically controlling the speed of how fast that thing's going up. So over five seconds, it's going up 40 times every second. It's, it's calculating a new location of that screen okay so over those five seconds 200 times it's it's going up right and i figured that that's the overall correct distance that i want it to go up so i took target frames per second 40 current frames per second and i got that by using a node in there called delta world seconds and i took it and i took the inverse of it basically one divided by delta seconds okay and that gives me what my current frames per second is 
That's what that little equation is right there. One second divided by the change in seconds from frame to frame gives me the number of frames I'm getting per second. Okay, so say I'm only getting 20 frames per second, which is very low. That would actually make you sick in VR. But if it's really low like that, we're going to take 40 divided by 20, which gives us 2. And remember, this is the target frames per second over current frames per second. That would give us a factor of 2. And then what I'm doing is multiplying all my motion of the screen by 2 so that even though my frame rate is low, I'm now doubling the movements each time. So it still ends up going up 200 units overall. Does that make sense? So if I've got a slow frame rate, it's going to speed it up. If I've got a really high frame rate, like 100, then uh, it would it would put this at 0.4, and it would slow it would make each movement only 40% of the full movement in my timeline, so that it doesn't go super far up into the ceiling, even though I've got a really fast frame rate. Okay, so this kind of evens everything out. That's the equation right there, and I'll show you how it translates into scripting nodes right here. So the node is get world delta seconds. These are just divide, right? If you type in divide and you can divide different things, these are probably um, floats, float divided by float. I plugged that in as the bottom and then put one up here. Okay, so this is just doing math in scripting. And then I divided that by 40. And then you can see that's where it's multiplying by the units that the track is spitting out, the timeline is spitting out. Okay, and that's what gives me my Z vector. Then finally that plugs into add relative location. That's what's making the screen go up. Then I'm setting the screen down to be off now. So that means it's up, not down. Then we're delaying for five seconds and making it so that button can be pressed again. So for five seconds after you press the button, it cannot be pressed. But after five seconds, it can be pressed again. Okay, so let's look at what that all looks like. Um, hopefully, you can follow along or at least just copy what I've created here. And hopefully, that will start giving you a feel for how this all works. Let's make sure this is all compiled. Everything looks good. Okay, now quickly, let's just look at what this looks like in VR. Okay, here I am. I'm going to go up to that button. Remember when I grab it, Okay, it's within that five seconds, so I can't do anything until the five seconds is up, then I can do something. But the scale is happening. You see the button go up and down. And you also see my screen going up and down, off to the right here. Okay, and I've actually got it set up. So now if I click it, that Boolean is set that the screen is up. So now it knows to run the other script, which reverses everything and brings it back down. Okay, now no matter my frame rate, no, what, no matter what my frame rate is, it's always going to go up that same distance and come down that same distance so it doesn't get all wacky in there. Okay, so you saw how the buttons got smaller and bigger. The screen went up. Within five seconds, you can press it again, and that will basically start it from the bottom again, makes it jump. Okay, so that's pretty much that. I could go through basically what makes the screen go down, but it's really just everything in reverse and make sure your, your uh, booleans are being, being set to the opposite now. So you can see here the screen is being set to, the screen is no longer down, it's up. So up here, when you check this screen down, yes, you would do all this, screen down, up, oh, not anymore, so false. So run this one down here now. And uh, here's, here's what it looks like. You can see all the settings. Everything is pretty much the same, except in reverse. The button is still the same. There you go, add relative location. The timeline is gonna be that instead. So it goes from zero to negative two over five seconds. That's what I want right there, okay. And then the booleans are being set to the opposite of what they were up above. Other than that, that's about it.